This is my intro music. Welcome to the video. I hope you like it lots, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Now let's react. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Glitter and Lasers. And this is Glitter and Lasers' newest video. It's from yesterday, yeah. Uh, today is March the 4th. This is Can I Be a Runner? Question mark Facing the Hard Truth. And so basically Anna is going to walk us through her beginning steps as a runner. Because, you know, you guys, she's like, she's a pro runner now. She She's so pro that she's giving people advice on workout equipment and offering to train people with the TRX gear that she has. Because Anna, Anna knows all now. And I took a couple classes, and so now she's she knows what she's doing. Anyway, basically what this is, is um, I'm guessing old footage of her working with, the beginning of her working with Run, Run Lab in Austin. And these are the beginning steps that she went through. I, I'm putting that in quotes because I'm 90% sure this is old footage with a modern voiceover. There's a couple of things that come up in the video, and I'll address them when we get there, but at the end, if this doesn't take too long, and I'm going to try to not take too long, um, I want to talk about Anna's book because there's a few times in early in this video where she talks about how she used to run. She misses running. And she's said that in one of the other videos I watched. I don't remember which one it was. It might have been a short where she mentions that she used to run. And I was like, OK, maybe she was a lot lighter before and maybe she did kind of jog, run. I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough about Anna's past. But I was like, hey, she's kind of oversharing in her her positivity book, her toxic positivity book. Maybe she's got some stories about working, about being a runner in it. So I, I looked and yeah, around chapter seven or part seven, um, she talks about how she took up running. That book was published in 2018. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, I think it'll be a little eye opening for a lot of people. Um, so going into this before we get started, I am an anthropologist by training. I am a retired archaeologist. I like watching the girls and girl world because I am fascinated by the culture and the subculture therein of Anna's a really interesting character to keep an eye on because Anna's Anna's online persona is so curated and it's so obviously not her normal persona, yet it is so scripted and curated and to the to details. Even the food she eats that she shows us that she eats. There Anna has this image of herself that she is determined that the audience is going to believe and in in that process of making us believe. She buys all of the stuff that she needs to show us to make us believe that she's working out and she's eating healthy and that she's running and that she's doing this and she's doing that. And it's she's one of the ways she communicates that with her audience, because God knows she doesn't talk to us, um, is by showing us stuff, the consumerism and the commercialism of it. Also, Anna, Anna can't do a video that doesn't sound like a commercial and... I guess she got I guess she got enough pushback in her comments about how this sounds like a promotion for Run Lab. Like they've they're paying her to promote them. And she says in her description that no, she's not promoting them, but here's a link if you want to work with them. Okay. And this really does sound a lot like a promo. So and she does mention that she got some free classes from them. But that was after she approached them first. Girl, it doesn't matter when they gave them to you. It's still freebies. They're still, they're still like rewarding you for working with them in the hopes that you will reward them in return with your massive audience who may or may not be real. There, I said it out loud. Her numbers bother me. Just 2.12 million viewer followers on YouTube. Yeah, 2.2 million subscribers. And this has 10,000 views. 
a little over 10,000 views. That number just feels really freaking low. It has 800 likes. Where are your people? This thing's a day old. Like, it's 24 hours old. Like, where are your people? It's very weird to me. I follow other bigger... I follow other big YouTube personalities who have similar followers, following counts, and their shit's off the charts, man. Like, they're numbers that I don't even... can't even comprehend because I have dyslexia brain. For real. It, these are not the same. Anyway completely different tangent. I do have her sped up to time and a quarter. Um, this is the third time I've tried to record this. So, uh, let's, let's get through this cause I got things to do tonight. I used to really love running. I used to really love it. And it has felt so far from me for so long. I think that's what's most exciting about today is that possibility is endless. She also sounds like she has something in her mouth. And I don't know why that bothers me so much. And sometimes it just takes putting yourself out there and doing the damn thing to start the journey. That's what today's about for me, starting the journey. I think the voiceover is definitely from whenever she put this video together. The footage is not. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to come out here and I was going to run like a quarter of a mile and here I just did a mile. So it just... My body just constantly impresses me and surprises me, and it is such an exciting thing. I hate when people do that, where they disassociate themselves from their bodies. You are your body. I said it. Deal with it. It's just really exciting, and I can't even express it because it's like, there aren't words. There aren't words to feel like I have my body back, and it's really awesome. And the other thing that ticks me off about this beginning is, you did this to yourself, Anna. Anyway. I used to love this so much. <laughs> just being able to do that today just felt freaking awesome. Why is this so loud? Okay, so today we are at... The that music was ridiculously loud. The Run Lab, and we are here because... I want to run a 5k, but I realize that in a bigger body, there's a lot of ch this, this picture is totally not staged. We are totally not standing here just specifically so that the camera can get some b-roll. This is a totally natural thing for all of us to be doing. <laughs> here because I want to run a 5k, but I realize that in a bigger body, there's a lot of challenges when running. So I wanted to work with somebody who could like help me run correctly so I don't injure myself. I you're not in a bigger body. You're obese. I also really like them because when I talk to them on the phone, they don't buy into the BS that bigger bodies can't run. In fact, it's like one of their goals. She has footage of herself talking with them on the phone. This footage is from her first day apparently there. None of these people are as big as Anna. I'm kind of impressed at the level of premeditation that Anna went through to make this video. Anna didn't just go, okay, I'm going to contact some people and I'm going to go to the first day and all of that. And you know, like a normal person would do like, you know, and then later on be like, you know, this is really working now. I want to document it. She went into this documenting it. So from day one, she had every intention of making this video eventually. Okay. She's been doing this running thing since at, at least the beginning of the year. If not a little bit in the last year. This is how long she's been planning to make this video. Like all the way in the, all the way back there when she very first started doing this with Run Lab. Her intention has always been to make these videos and to show this like glow up progress from day one she's been planning this i'm just like this is why i'm like i don't know how much of anna to believe because it's so it's so planned it's so curated and it's so fake like i don't care that anna's running i mean 
whatever you want to call it. He has plans since the since starting this to make these videos. This and all of the other little videos that she's made about her running. She has planned every single one of them out since before she's even started, probably. That's crazy to me. It's just like the level of uh the the level of planning and premeditation is just like it's impressive to show people that more people can run so today i'm gonna run on a treadmill again none of those people in any of those pictures were the same size as anna <laughs> and they're gonna tell me what i'm doing wrong i'm gonna get my ish together essentially in terms of like running okay let's do this it it looks like if those pictures are their clients from the past anna is the largest person they've worked with which is another reason why I think Run Lab is like all for this because they think that like if Anna can become a success story and they're the ones that made her a success what what does that have to what does that say about them Hi, Hi I'm Dr. Kim Davis. I'm the founder and CEO of Run Lab here in Austin. She is very comfortable in front of a camera very 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 comfortable in front of a camera texas my feeling and the reason for starting this company is because i feel that anybody who wants to run should be able to run and we're, we're all built very individually right so this we base our process on helping people understand their own bodies and the way that they should move unique to their structure so there's no there's no right way to move there's no right way to run it all depends on you and the way you're hmm. i'm pretty sure there's a right and a wrong way to run as far as like injury prevention uh I don't know my runners tell me I don't run but I know when it comes to the equipment in the gym there's a right way and a wrong way to use it so that you don't injure yourself so I, I don't the people are way too obsessed with being unique I'm just saying built so that's kind of what this company is built on and why we're here I, I was gonna ask you what is your so what's your what's your goal besides just being able to run do you have okay so my goal for right now and here's the thing that's been like really helpful on this journey for me is not setting goals that are like so grandiose yeah my the thing that's been helping me is not setting goals kind of like the beginning of the year where you basically told us you weren't setting any goals you were just gonna let the universe guide you throughout the year no goals so basically that's what you're doing here that i never get to like get to them or it takes so long to get to them that like yeah it's, it, I lose faith in the process, right? So I thought just like as a first goal that felt like realistic for me is a 5K. Kind of the way the process will work is we'll sit down with you, we'll go through your history, we'll go through uh -huh. your range of motion, we'll, go, we'll find your strengths, your weaknesses, all the things. Yeah. Then we'll put you on a treadmill, we'll film you from all the different directions, and then we'll aggregate all that information, and then we'll sit down and we'll say, okay, you know, based on your current level of fitness, your mm -hmm. current strengths, your current weaknesses, you know, what does what the training plan sort of look like for you? Um, what are the things you need to yeah. work on to make sure you don't get injured? Because that's obviously our number one priority. You can never get faster, you can never run longer if you're injured. And so first yeah. order of business is sort of injury proofing your body. Mm -hmm. And because you have this big... Anna doesn't like what she's hearing. I don't know what Anna is hearing because God only knows, but she doesn't like it. Foundation that you're building from. Either she's just getting bored of listening to this woman talk because she's talked for more than two seconds. Um, of being active for this period of time. Yeah. I'm talking about, you know, all of that stuff is going to be easier than some. So this woman says, since you already have a foundation of being so active, which means Anna has told this woman that she's been doing the co-pilot workouts and that she's been working out and doing them regularly, consistently doing these workouts. So Anna has told this woman that she is an active queen and she is ready to take the next step into running. And this woman's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, really? Really? Somebody who's just getting off the couch and starting for the first time. All right, Anna, this is Dr. Rode. He's basically getting off the couch and starting for the first time. Like, how, how do you not see that? And so he's going to be Hello. in charge of nice your care. Nice to meet take you. Take the whole process and the assessment and all the fun things. So today is about range of motion, strength, how you're walking, how you're moving, what aches and pains you have. We want to see structurally what is going on. How you're... Why are they doing this in the hallway? I don't understand the hallway. Like, do they do every client they take? Do they, they make them march up and down what is clearly the office hallway? ...the tissues are or are not. And then that will help us kind of create the profile that is you as far as getting your journey to that 5K and okay. whatever else you want to do. The first thing Dr. Roden did was sit me down and ask me a ton of questions about my medical history. He wanted to have a clear picture of where I was at currently. 
and then also understand any aches and pains I was experiencing that might be able to be corrected through gait training and physical therapy. He then continued with a physical analysis, so looking at the flexibility and mobility of my joint. He even felt inside each joint to better understand how they connected, what inflammation I... I could say something really mean, but I'm not going to. ...might have, and also if there is any existing damage. Is this spot different than this spot? How could he tell if there was existing damage or not? No offense. Just doing a, a hand massage like that, like, how can he reliably feel her joints? I'm really not trying to be mean. On top of everything else, Anna has uh, the, the, the lip edema. Yeah, the fat one. Yeah, not the fluid, the fat, the lip edema. She's got that in her legs. So how can he tell? I'm just saying there's a lot of like interference between his hand and her joints, I guess is my point. So how can he reliably know if something is wrong? He's just, he's just using the field test. It's not like he's taking an x-ray or whatever else you would do to look inside someone's body like that. A little yet, but not much. But yes. But there's a notable increase along. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do the same thing out here. No. Okay. All of this would be used to design a plan that worked for me to help me walk and run in a way that was safe on my joints and prevented injury. All right. So at this point, we are doing the gait analytics. So we walk and jog depending on the, uh, the athlete's capabilities. In shoe and attitude. The athlete's capabilities. Dude, this guy is so full of jargon. I'm not saying the guy's not smart. I'm just saying he's like trying to make himself seem or trying to make what they're getting ready to do seem very sciency. And so he's going to use a lot of five dollar words when he could just use plain English. And he's going to call Anna an athlete and not a client or a patient like he was getting ready to say. Issue looking at their biomechanical faults or their biomechanical faults benefits of what they're doing well. Once we know what those are, that will then create an individual protocol or plan of attack. An individual protocol. To address those anomalies that are... To address the anomalies. Okay, I'll stop. I'm sorry. It's just like the stupidity of it is really getting to me. This shit drives me nuts. I hate jargon. Causing stresses in different tissues in the body um, that are causing their aches and pains or just the inefficiency of the run where they're working harder versus smarter. So I'm going to take you half step forward from here. Perfect. So we're going to go head to toe. I'm going to make a bend, twist, turn. We're looking for any limitations. If you do experience any pain or aches during it, please let me know. But she's been doing yoga and stretching for like at least six, seven months at this point. Like she's a bendy queen. She has no limitations. All right. So again, starting at the top as best you can, rotate your head as far as you can both directions. Just like our old days in hopscotch. His face when she goes to do the hopscotch thing. <laughs> There's a point where he's just like, <laughs> this is kind of funny. You have to watch. It's a micro expression. You have to watch. Single foot, single foot. <laughs> right there, he's just like, ooh, ooh. don't do it again. He, he, he's not confident of her ability to not hurt herself here. <laughs> All good. These are challenging. We do them on purpose, right? <laughs> challenging? <laughs> Did not know I cannot hop anymore she can't hop anymore there's nothing wrong with anna by the way she's just obese well and she has lipedema but there's an argument there that she has that because she's obese um she can't hop anymore then we're gonna sit up on the treadmill can i hold on initially yes but ideally, you're going to try to walk without it. Oh, I can walk without it, but I'm saying running. I don't... We'll see. I'm scared. You're going to run and hold on to that? I don't think I've ever seen anybody run while holding on to the treadmill. At the gym. At the gym I go to. I'm not saying somebody doesn't do it. I just don't think I've ever seen it happen. I see people hold on to it while they're walking. Especially when they put, like, the, the incline at, at some absurd angle. Which is fun. But, yeah, I... I don't, I can't recall ever seeing somebody holding on to it while running. Scared. We're only going to do whatever's comfortable. Okay, we'll okay. make it work. We're going to start with a walk. I'm going to get you up to what will be a comfortable pace for you. Okay. We're just going to incrementally go up and you're like, yeah, this is about the speed I walk at right now. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to start it. 
Next, we moved on to the physical activity segment of the analysis. And this is the part I was most scared for because I was gonna have to run on a treadmill. And if you don't know this, she's flat footed, which isn't surprising. I'm flat footed too sometimes. Treadmills are usually. I started off flat footed and then I started taking ballet. And honestly, that's how I developed an arch. So it can be built. Not safe for bigger bodies. They're just not designed for us. I think with your outside. He's concerned about being on the treadmill because she says the treadmills aren't built for bigger bodies, aka obese people. The average treadmill, because I looked this up, the average treadmill um, can go up to 300 to 350 in weight on it. Um, and you can buy ones that go higher, obviously. So somebody was like she's only somebody in my comments i forget who it was or maybe it wasn't my comments it was her comments but somebody was like she's only like 300 and some pounds and i'm like in what world and in this video chikara transformations mentioned this when she was watching it because she couldn't figure out if this was recent video or video from the past i'm 90 percent sure this is video from the past because chikara then said um if this is modern if this is current video, then she's gained about 50 pounds of weight. But I know that in other videos recently that that Chikara has watched, she has said that Anna has lost a max of 50 pounds. So, yeah, there you go. I Timeline. Think about it, right? Here I'm like, am I going to fall off of it? What's the speed? Whereas when I'm outside, I can just be like, whatever speed feels right. And that might be different in each step. Look at his face. He's just like, really? Oh, that's a thing. And she's like, are you, are you believing my bullshit? Second like so. Fortunately, the one I brought. <laughs> He's just like, cool. Lab was safe, but that did not erase my anxiety based on previous experiences. How many treadmills have you broken? You say previous experiences. It's an evolutionary process when it comes to your walking and your running. Like, it's developmental, not evolutionary. For the love of Christ, stop it. We're going to fix your walk as well. Not just make you a good runner, but make you a good walker. Okay. Because a lot of the concepts that we're going to apply in your jogging and your running uh -huh. also apply in your walk. At the end of my assessment, I found out some pretty bad news. It turns out I don't walk properly. You thought you did? Anna, honey, watch your own videos when you walk. You can't even stand, let alone walk properly. You didn't need an analysis for that. You list to one side. You throw yourself back and forth to propel yourself forward. It... Normal people don't walk like that. I have straight legs, which means I do not bend my knees at all when I walk. So before I even thought about running, I was going to have to relearn how to walk. I did wonder um, when she said she didn't bend her knees when she walked. I do wonder how much of that is the obesity and how much of that is now the, the lipedema. Because I know with Jordan, Jordan's big like wake up call was the fact that they were losing mobility. So and they're because they couldn't bend they couldn't bend their legs anymore because their legs had swollen so much. So I do wonder if like some of her uh mobility issue here is because of the, the lipedema. I'm just saying it might not all be the obesity. Because right now I was at serious risk of injury. Do you think this is actually possible? I'm being really real with you right now, Duncan. Yeah. Like, it, I'm not being like delu, delu, delusional. Sorry, I was going to say delulu, like the kids say, but. Yeah. And you're not one of them, so thank you. That's very possible. Like, we have people in every shape and size and form and different diagnoses that come in here. And sure, Jan. They have different goals, whether it be marathons, 5K, just walking with their kids, feeling mm -hmm. safe. Just talking with a patient yesterday. They want to be able to go to Galveston, walk in and out of the water without not feeling pain or efficient. And so practice. Why are you crying? Anna, stop. Practicing mechanically what is different about an incline versus a decline or unstable surfaces and what changes mechanically is super important for them. And they want to be able to do that with their friends on Thanksgiving. So like for them, that's their marathon. 
Yeah. And we're gonna crush it and take names and kick butt for that thing. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm like getting teary eyed, it's not intentional, but it's just like, um, that was me like a year ago. And this just gives me hope that there's like still so much more. Cause sometimes you wonder like, okay, I've been at this for a year, which I know. Anna, it's okay. You, you don't have to like turn everything around to be about you. It's fine. You could have just taken the story and accepted it for what it was. You, di you didn't have to like put yourself in, in the focus again. I guess it's your video. Technically a year is not a long time, but like it feels like a long time. Yeah. And it's I think this a long is just time. coming at the perfect time for me to like just keep moving forward because this does, especially getting on that treadmill, uh, feels a little bit impossible. And I have more doubts now <laughs> than they did coming into this. Cool. I love when she does the shots where she's not looking at the camera, but she's 100% aware the camera's there. She just always looks so stiff. And she does that thing where she drops her mouth open. I She does it anytime she's doing her modeling shots. It's like her only expression. She's got her mouth open the whole time. I'm just like, do you watch models? Like, yeah, I'm sure some of them do sometimes do that. But like, they're not always got their mouth hanging open. <laughs> So I think the reason a lot of plus size people don't exercise or at least don't consistently exercise is like we get fed like unrealistic expectations of what should be achievable on your first time. You do? He, he was pretty realistic. I guess that's the point she's getting ready to make. I... And I think when someone presents something as like an easy at home workout or like um, a simple step, right? And then you take that step and it's really fucking hard and you can't do it. It should be a wake-up call. You're incapable of completing what's supposedly easy. That puts a, like, mindset... It, it, sorry, it creates a mindset that, like, you, you are so far behind that it's impossible that you can't even do the easy workout. So I just hate, in general, the idea of, like, easy workouts. And I think we should talk more about the fact that, like, big changes take a long time. What does this have... Okay. What does this have to do with you running? What does any of this, what did any of that speech and all of that film of you walking, what did any of that have to do with you running? They don't just happen from like three workouts. They don't just happen from showing up for a month or a couple months. Like I was, I was saying when I was walking this, I was like, it was literally last week and it's been almost nine months at this point of me working out at least three times a week. I just now start to feel like it's a habit and I just now start to not feel exhausted. And that's like, that's nine months, right? Like that's not a couple weeks. And I just, the more I do this, the more I work on my physicality and just like a lot of my health choices, the more I realize that it's like, it is sold to us as something easy to fix and it is not. Again, I don't know what any of this has to do with, I don't know what any of this has to do with you running or anything that you just did at Run Lab. What, it, what are you doing? What is this monologue? Uh... So when we are running, you actually do a very good job because you not a belly a diaper in my butt. Back and down. Squeeze your butt to make it come back up. Go ahead and lean forward into your foot and put your feet side by side. I think if anything, this whole experience has taught me one thing. That you love shopping. Okay, so all of that footage is old footage. Because A, I recognize some of those outfits. B, there's Christmas decorations and things. C, those are all of the shoes that she bought for her workout clothes try on where she had a different pair of shoes for each outfit so there's that how many pairs of shoes does she own like sneakers not even like a variety of types of shoes just sneakers workout shoes i guess what you would call them i don't know like how many pairs does she own and why but all right so this this footage is from 2023 it's it's not from 2024 it's from 2023 okay around christmas ish time give or take uh timeline is really weird i wish she had put dates in here it would have helped people out a lot but putting dates on things makes it trackable and anna is really really good about making it hard to definitively pin her down on things like 
nobody really knows exactly how tall she is nobody really knows how much she weighs nobody really knows what she eats like she's really good at hiding all of that most people I mean, most people in girl world know that she's taking Wagovi or at least has taken Wagovi in the past, but like a lot of her followers don't know that because she hides it very, very well. Um, and that's why I don't think there's any like dates in this other than stuff from the background that you can put together. And since Texas is always warm, uh, it's really hard to like narrow it down by season. Anyway, there are holiday decorations, so we know that much. But anyway, but having definitive dates, like this is when I, this is the date that I started. This video was filmed on this date. It allows a timeline to be created from that point going forward. And so it just creates, it creates a way for her audience to like track her and track her progress within an actual amount of time, like definitive time. And Anna's just not going to let you do that. Anna just will not because that that gives i think she views that as giving her audience too much power over her or something i don't know too much observation all right the other thing i want to talk about is anna's book anyway i'm not going to pull anna's book up on the page the screen like this just because i don't i don't want to attempt copyright all right but we're in chapter seven of anna's book it's called chapter seven goals, creating a cause for self celebration. <laughs> Cause of course this book was published in 2018 and this is important. Now that we've just witnessed Anna's running rebirth, remember she used to run. This is the story of her using to run. So she had been a runner prior to 2018. All right. Again, there's no dates here. To nail this down she could have been doing this when she was 16 we don't know i highly doubt she was but she says um have you ever had a dream that seems silly or impossible i remember having a dream where i was running i was speeding through cornfields zooming down alleyways and feeling the wind at my back in that dream i felt free i woke up that morning convinced i was meant to be a runner prior to my hazy revelation my experience with running was minimal I had probably run a total of a quarter of a mile in the past six years combined. So this is close to 2018, Anna, like if not actually 2017, Anna or something like that. All right. I could not remember the last time I ran anywhere. I don't even own tennis shoes. I mean, I know you can run in tennis shoes, but I headed to the shoe store and bought my first pair of running shoes. 2018 guys. Um, what I've always found odd is that when you try to change your habits, so many people rush in and tell you that you can't. Fat girls can't run. You're going to injure yourself. You should stick to walking. Perhaps this, uh, perhaps this is how you feel now. Yada, yada, yada. This is all... If I didn't keep telling you that this was 2018, this, this, is my, this is exactly what she's getting today. All right? And here we go. I started running a minute at a time. Those were the longest minute intervals of my life. I'd stand hunched over at the end, gasping for breath and praying that I wouldn't die. This is why I don't run. Um, however, little by little, I got better. I began running farther for longer. I never ran very fast, but I was running. Um, my dream had become a reality. If I didn't tell you that this was from 2018, you would think not only was this modern day, but this is stuff that she has said in her videos about her running, which also feeds into the whole thing about her, um, her encounter with the lady on the running trail that happened, I think a month ago now, where the woman told her, supposedly told her, good job getting out there. And Anna had a complete meltdown over it. If Anna has already been a runner and she was part of the running community, wouldn't she have already known that that was like running etiquette, which is something that like all of the runners in my comment section have been telling me that, that, that that's just running etiquette basically. And wouldn't Anna already know that if she had been running? Here we go. One thing I do is smile at strangers and stop to pet their dogs when I go for runs. Kind of defeats the purpose of running, but all right. 
This is an easy way to add a small amount of social interaction to my daily life. Unless someone wants to talk to me and, and give me encouragement and then I'm going to have a meltdown over it. <laughs> you know? It, this is the same chapter. When, when you first start exploring exercise, it's important to recognize that you will not be good at it or enjoy some activities. I have met so many women who don't exercise because they went to the gym and felt uncomfortable or tried to run and couldn't keep up with the run club they had joined. That's, that's not about that. I mean, I don't run, but even I know that's not about that. So even in 2018, she's trying to convince us that exercise is great and good and that she exercises, you guys. So anyway, in her book, I was just curious if she had mentioned anything about her past running. Since in this video and in another video prior to this, she makes it sound like she used to be some kind of like regular runner. You know, how she regularly works out three times a week for an hour every day. <laughs> for an hour each day. Yeah. Um, so I was curious about that because she's trying to make it sound like and i've noticed this is a new narrative but she's mentioned it in 2018 when she published this book so it was at least around imagine she was probably writing the book in 2017 so she's at least had this story about herself being a runner since 2017 and it in 2018 so this isn't a new story for Anna, I guess. However, it is interesting that it's recently started to resurface. She, I don't recall her ever mentioning it before until she got here. And even when she was talking to the Run Lab people, she never mentioned that she used to run. She told the lady who owns the Run Lab that she works out regularly. But she, I didn't hear her say anything about being a runner before. So she's dragging this up now as a way of being like, hey, see, I used to do this. I can do it again because I used to do it. You're all just haters. You're just fat phobe haters. And it, it's the timing of her remembering that she used to be a runner is very interesting to me. So again considering i i can't recall before that one video her ever mentioning that she used to run and i mean if you guys have heard it before let me know uh but i've never heard it and i've been following her running journey since she started it so uh there you go with that but i do think it's interesting that anna is saying in 2018 the exact same things that she's saying now about her current running journey and i just it's another one of those moments where like i watched some five-year-old clips that she had on her instagram about positivity and yada yada she looks exactly like she does today she sounds like she's saying the same things she sounds the same she physically looks the same as she did five years ago so what, 2021, you know, and this is 2018. It's impressive to me, not only how little Anna's changed, even though she's constantly talking about change and bettering herself and all that stuff and positive this and, you know, improvement that she hasn't changed at all. And like she's recycling things from her past like this running thing i wonder now after especially after watching this video and knowing that it's going to be a series because she was like N next time watch me shop for shoes um she went into this planning on making this series so like did she even really want to run or was she just like this is going to get views this is going to get engagement because god knows i couldn't actually engage with my audience um so like it's just it just feels fake i'm not saying she's not really running clearly she's doing something similar she is clearly working with the run lab people though for how long i'm not entirely sure 
uh because it doesn't seem like she's still working with them right now and maybe she was only there for maybe she was only going to work with them for like three months or something like that i don't know but now she's like promoting them in her very first video i assume we're going to see more of them going forward and again this just feels like a promo for them and i'm sure they're loving the publicity one way or the other um that kind of shit it's just it's so suspicious it's so premeditated it's so fake i just i don't know guys i don't know how i feel about this but you know she's put so much into it like if she were to just drop this whole thing now like if she just woke up tomorrow and just like oh i'm not gonna run anymore like the backlash that she would get at this point would be so bad that she can't she can't do this she has to at least run the 5k before she can stop running you know she has to at least be able to be like i ran the 5k look guys i did the thing i said i was gonna do i was just very interested in this whole thing i'm gonna be interested to watch the rest of it and i'm gonna critique it as we go this is just so much this just is exactly what i'm talking about when i say that anna has a very specific curated image of herself that she wants to project towards her audience to the point where she planned this video all the way back when she very first started doing this run this running stuff like she has decided all the way back then that she was going to convince her audience that she is a runner all the way back then only to now release the videos see what i'm saying Anyway, maybe I'm just being too conspiratorial here. Maybe it, maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but uh, I'm an anthropologist and we literally are trained to do that. So there you go. It is never just a cigar. It is never just a cigar. So I'm going to, I'm going to get off here. Um, let's see. Go ahead and put, oh goodness. I don't know. Go ahead and put a little runner down in the comments section because it's it's obvious and easy so put a little runner as your emoji down in the comments section let me know what you guys think am i overthinking it probably um what do you guys think about the whole thing what do you how does this whole premeditation thing the, this planning this far back thing how does this all hit you um let me know what you think we're gonna see going forward because obviously this is a series and we're gonna we're going to go all the way to the end. There better be a freaking 5k at the end of this is what I'm saying. What do you think about Run Lab? What do you think about um, them claiming that they can train Anna to run safely? What do you think about them saying you have to learn to walk first? I found that kind of interesting, but she's still running or jogging or shuffling or whatever the hell they're going to call it. You know, so let me know what you guys think about all of that. And I will see everybody in the next one. Bye. This is my outro music. You can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing. This is my outro music. Thank you for watching. See you next time.